So when I tell people that I practice securities law as an attorney, most people, a lot of people don't really know exactly what that is or what it means. So securities law, a lot of times deals with investing and protecting investors. It's like a regulation of the investing environment. So the SEC is one of the probably the terms you've heard of, Securities and Exchange Commission, that regulates investing on a federal level. So, you know, we see this all the time where people don't really completely understand that securities law has come into effect, that it um, basically applies to whatever they're doing. So, for example, you meet somebody in person or you get a Facebook post or even, you know, somebody, hey, jump on this call real quick with me. Hey, uh, thanks for jumping on the Zoom call. You know, I just think that you would be really interested uh, in making some money from this deal that I got. In order to close on this, it's an apartment complex. I need like 50 grand more. Um, it closes in about a week. So, you know, basically I'd need about 50 grand more. You just be kind of a passive investor. You partner up with me and you wouldn't really have to do anything. But, you know, you'd be able to probably get about a three times return in about six months is what it looks like from what we're projecting. So that right there is a pitch to an investor and it's an offer for the sale of security. That's an example. Uh, and most people think, oh, it's not an offering a security. What are you talking about? No, that is a security because you're offering an investment opportunity. And the SEC broadly defines what a security is and it would include what I just said to you. So whether that's in a Facebook post or uh, in person, over the phone, a Zoom call, in writing, by email, those are all potentially an offer to sell a security. And it's not a traditional like stock like you think of, but it's still an investment opportunity that's covered by securities law. Now, that's not a bad thing because you still have ways of doing that and complying with securities law. Um, you know, the pitch I just made maybe was a little bit overboard, but um, in some of the promises that were made. So you want to make sure that you're careful about what you're saying. But securities law does allow you to make pitches to investors. So I'm going to go over a little bit. I'm going to share my screen real quick, go over a little bit about the basics of securities law and what are some, some of the pitfalls. So here's an example of a post. So let's say, you know, Somebody posts on, it's kind of similar to what I was just talking about. Hey, I found this multifamily deal uh, in the Dallas area. Regular cash flow will give you a 23% IRR on a $50,000 investment. You know, DM me and I post this. A private group, publicly, however it is. That's an offer for the sale of a security um, and it is covered by securities law. So you need to make sure you're compliant. But there are ways to actually do this and still do it legally. So people often ask me, you know, well, can I find investors online? Can I post about investment opportunities? The general answer is yes, as long as you comply with securities law. And it's not that complicated. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Like, if you just do it, then you've been compliant. Um, so what happens if you don't comply? You know, people often say, oh, well, I've been just doing this as bringing people in as partners. We do an operating agreement and, you know, they're investors. They don't really have any say, but, you know, it's not really a security. Well, I hate to tell you, it probably is. If it's a passive investor, um, you know, it's just a somebody who's putting somebody in as a silent partner. Yeah, it's probably a, a security covered by securities law. So if you don't comply, both the state and the federal government have the right to come after you potentially criminally or civilly for unregistered sale of securities. Um, because if you sell a security, it has to either be registered or exempt from registration. Um, what they can do, you know, normally you don't see criminal action, but they could potentially. Usually it's more civil action that they sue you. Um, usually they'll ask for some fines, maybe penalties. And one of the biggest things is they're gonna ask usually for an order prohibiting you from any further fundraising. So this means if the SEC came after you and said, you weren't supposed to do that, now I'm going to ask for a court order saying you are no longer allowed to be involved in what's called a private placement. So that means you can't go out and privately raise money for this deal, for next week's deal, for next year's deal, or any time in the future. And potentially, if you're considered a bad actor under Rule 506, then potentially you may not even be able to be an investor 
in future deals that someone comes to you with. Uh, so it can have a huge impact uh, on what you're doing and your ability to raise capital in the future. The other thing is a rescission right of an investor. That just means basically that an investor who puts money in and a couple a month down the road for whatever reason says, I want my money back and you don't have it. And they say, I'm going to see what I can do. I'm going to sue you. The basis of their lawsuit can be something called a rescission right. And they can sue you saying, hey, I want to exercise a rescission right because you didn't comply with securities law. And unless you did comply, they're going to win. They're going to have the right to have all their money back plus interest, uh, depending on the state where you're at and how they sue, but at least interest, their money back, maybe attorney's fees that it cost them to come after you. And potentially you're going to have to pay that back out of your company or even personally. So there can be some big impacts. Uh, what are the legal issues in raising capital? Securities law is mostly the Securities Act of 1933. There's a 34 Act, but that doesn't really apply to what we're talking about today. The main exemption, like 90% of the private capital, at least, that's raised is under Regulation D, typically Rule 506. Um, 506 does generally prohibit general solicitation. So general solicitation, uh, basically, this is Rule 502 that talks about no one could basically advertise or solicit through any meeting, seminar, um, advertisement, and that's all technically banned if you're using Regulation D, which is an exemption. However, there are ways around it. Uh, now, general solicitation is basically, you know, it even talks about a posting on a website, um, like what I just talked about, that pitch that I just made, the post that I was showing you from Facebook, any of that could be a general solicitation, whether it's in a private group, privately to someone you know, um, or you put it on social media on Instagram as a post. Um, there is an exemption that if you're just talking about your business in general, so even if you're like an investment fund, it may not be a solicitation, but um, typically this is. Now, one of the carve outs or allowed procedures to avoid that ban on general solicitation is if you have a pre-existing and substantive relationship uh, with the potential investor. So it's within your private network, you've done deals with this person or a business partner, you probably have a pre-existing substantive relationship with that person. So you can avoid this ban on general solicitation uh, under Rule 506B. Now it has to exist prior to you raising money. So you have to know the person ahead of time. You can't create the relationship and then say, oh, by the way, thanks, I just met you. Now I want to pitch you this deal. Um, now, there's no set amount of time that you have to have known this person for it to be pre-existing, but it has, does have to be substantive, meaning you have to know stuff about this person enough to know they have financial sophistication, investing experience to protect themselves and understand the investment. So just because it's a family friend doesn't necessarily mean that's a substantive relationship. You might not know anything about them. You don't even know what they do for work. Our kids go to school together. That doesn't tell you much. Um, you can also avoid the ban on general solicitation, not only through that pre-existing substantive relationship, but also another exemption under SEC Rule 506C. This allows you to generally solicit and advertise on social media. If you see anything online, it's probably a 506C offering. Um, you don't have to have that pre-existing substantive relationship. Um, it can be just about to just about anyone. Now, um, I'm gonna, let's close this. Yeah, so in, in practice, like the, the pitch that I gave, that would be a general solicitation. So if I gave that to a business partner that I've known for 10 years, I've done a bunch of deals with, invested with, then that's probably a pre-existing substantive relationship. 
and that was okay if I complied with 506B along the way, meaning I had to comply. Okay, they probably signed a subscription agreement. I probably provided a disclosure document to them ahead of time, a private placement memorandum that explained the risks of investing, what the deal was about. And then I filed a Form D with the SEC that disclosed that I raised money. So mostly it's just a bunch of paperwork. And as long as you do it, you've complied. Now, the other thing, that's 506B if it's somebody I knew. Now, if it was someone I didn't know, like I just re randomly reached out to someone or I posted it on social media to the world or to a large group, even in a private group, it's a large bunch of people you don't really know. Um, it's probably a general sol solicitation that is allowed if you rely on 506C, which is under Regulation D. So you have 506B, 506C. Pre-existing substance relationship, uh, your buddy, that's 506B. You're posting it online, you don't really know the person, 506C. Now, 506C, you can take people in, you can post it on social media, you can post it wherever without violating that ban on general solicitation. Uh, the SEC allows this as long as you've taken the right steps, including what I talked about, filing Form D, disclosure documents, having them fill out subscription. And part of this is not necessarily required, but best practice, uh, giving them copies of operating agreements, partnership agreements, having them sign a subscription agreement, um, and giving them a private placement memorandum to explain the investment and the risks. Now, under 506C, the requirement also is that anyone that invests is an accredited investor, which is a defined term, uh, typically making over 200,000 a year, or a million dollars in net worth without including their house. Uh, but there's a whole list of defined terms for accredited. And not only do they need to be accredited under 506C, you actually have to take steps to verify that they are accredited. They can't just sign something and say, yes, I'm accredited. You have to get some documentation from somewhere else other than them. So that could be their CPA writes a verification letter says, yes, they're my clients. I know they make over 200 a year because I do their tax returns. Yes, they are accredited and they sign it. Boom, you've done what you needed to do under 506C. So that's just one example. So as long as you've taken those steps to comply, you file your Form D, you make all your disclosures. Um, if they're 506C, you verify them as accredited. As long as you've done that, you haven't violated any law and you're good. But if you're out there just randomly pitching people, you don't even know if, about securities law or exemptions or anything, then you probably are uh, breaking the law and you know putting yourself in a lot of risk, both you personally, because they can come after you personally, the company or the deal that you've set up, any of your other partners that you've brought in, the other investors, you're putting everyone at risk. So it's a huge liability um, to you to do so. And to comply with securities law is not overly complicated. I deal with it all the time uh, and can put deals together in a matter, matter of a couple of weeks so that people can go and raise money legally. So make sure you're up to speed. Check the SEC's website. They actually have a really good educational information, sec.gov, sec.gov. Um, they have investor edu education section, I think it's called. Um, and it talks about, you know, very down to earth, plain language, easy to understand explanations of 506B, 506C, uh, the exemptions, general solicitation, all of that is covered in there, as well as on my YouTube channel here, feel free to subscribe uh, because I cover a lot of those same topics and try to give examples so people can understand exactly what it means to them. So thanks for watching.